Good afternoon and welcome to our third live cast from Learning Technologies and today we're going to talk about digital capabilities and we've got plenty of people to come in and um, share their thoughts and experiences of what digital capabilities means at Solent and how we support it and how we'd like to develop it in the future. So it should be um, a pretty good 45 minutes. Uh, with me on the sofa is Hannah Watts who's one of our learning technologists and uh, Hannah's leading on digital capabilities in the learning technologies department and um, we'll be talking to her a little bit more later. Um, we're also going to hear from a lecturer about how these skills can be embedded into the curriculum. We're going to hear from one of the information librarians to understand information literacies and the support that's available through the library resources and we're also going to hear from one of the digital partners, a student who's working in a project that we've recently started um, about supporting staff and student digital capabilities. So there's quite a lot uh, going on today. If you have any questions or any thoughts that you'd like to share then you can go to the livecast page, there's a chat room there and you can log into the chat and uh, share your questions. Otherwise, please email us on instructional.design at solent.ac.uk. Okay, so I have Hannah. Um, Hannah, you are talking about digital capabilities. Why are they so important? Okay, great. So I'm going to talk through today about what we're doing in terms of the GISC work that's been going on around digital capabilities mm -hmm. um, and also then how we're then mapping it over to Solent and the ways in which we can help build confidence for both staff and students in terms of digital skills, um, but also how we can look to embed that in the curriculum as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to kind of start off by talking about today is how we've been looking at the GISC um, Digital Capabilities Framework mm -hmm. um, and actually how we started to explore that in more detail. First of all, we did that with the, um, the Digital Capabilities Self-Assessment Tool. Um, so we were giving staff and students the ability to kind of self-assess their own skills. Um, and that's mapped then across um, six key areas. So if I just show you here um, on the screen, we've got the Digital um, Capabilities framework and mm -hmm. actually if I just zoom in there the key areas that we are looking at um, in terms of digital capabilities is the ICT proficiency mm -hmm. um, so that's how we're switching on our equipment are we understanding how when we go into the classroom we know how to turn on the smart boards and these kind of things um, but then we look into more of things like can we take care of ourselves online understanding our digital well-being and our mm -hmm. identity um, but also how we can be a bit more um, creative online, how we can use things like blogs and websites to actually share our um, digital practice with others. Um, then that ties into how we manage our information, so how we store it. We often spend a lot of time talking with academics about how we can use things like OneDrive to make sure they store mm -hmm. their information on the cloud so it's always accessible anywhere they go with an internet connection. Um, but also we want to think about how people collaborate and communicate online as well. So again, referring it back to Seoul, um, talking about using forums, um, mm -hmm. discussion boards, messaging, so we can kind of keep that online environment alive while we're doing things in the classroom as well. And then lastly, looking at kind of your own personal development. Um, mm -hmm. And it's with this that we've started to think about how we then can tie in these types of um, digital capabilities with what we do here. Um, so using JISC, it's kind of inspired us to think about how do we use the tools and resources that we've got available to us at Solent to make sure our staff and students feel fully equipped to um, survive in the, the digital world, I guess. Hmm. Um, so one of the ways we've looked to do that is actually um, the Solent Digital Practitioner. Okay. Uh, so that is a, um, something that we're kind of drafting up at the moment. Um, and again, it looks to the JISC model as our kind of foundations, as our base. Um, but actually, if I just ta again take you to the screen here, um, we've got our Solent Digital Practitioner. So if you imagine if you're a tutor at the university, um, or even if you're a um, professional services member of staff, um, there's key areas that we want um, someone that works with us to be able to um, have these digital skills or capabilities that allow them to fulfill their job role um, but actually go that step beyond and maybe do something a bit more innovative. So if you look at this model, 
Um, we're looking at things like the digital self, the digital researcher, pedagogy, classroom technology, all these kind of areas that um, at, you're in the center as the digital practitioner, but it, you should have an understanding of all of these areas, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily um, have to know everything about every part of this model. It's actually understanding that if I'm teaching the classroom, it's really important I know about the classroom technology, um, but actually productivity is quite important too. Um, and again, if you were a researcher, digital researching is obviously key, but actually mm -hmm. how you turn on the equipment is also going to be relevant when you're doing a mm. Skype call or a digital um, presentation. Yeah, I think what I like about this is a lot of the times when we think about digital literacy, academic literacies, information literacies, we tend to be thinking of the students and their employability and they're leaving here and they need to be prepared but this is completely as much about the staff as it is about the students as well. Yeah definitely and I think um, one of it is kind of showing people where are all the help and resources that are available at the university mm -hmm. that a lot of this already exists and it's just a case of working with um, areas across the university. For instance, we've got Fiona coming on in a moment from um, our library services to actually help us understand how to find things on lynda.com mm -hmm. and to talk a bit more about that as well. But I think it's important that we realise that we're all kind of in this together and actually every service in the university has got a part to play in terms of improving digital capabilities. Um, but I think for a lot of what we do in terms of learning technologies is just giving people that confidence that they can work the equipment, that mm. it's worth trying out something new and having that communication with the students that actually yeah. you might not have um, all the know-how and the knowledge of to do something but a student might be able to give you that confidence as well to, to give it a go. Excellent and how does this tie into the sole baseline and how we use the VLE? Yeah so um, I was just saying at the beginning there that one part of it is about kind of yourself and your own personal development mm -hmm. um, but of course what we're always trying to do as well is um, improve the curriculum and um, enhance it using digital technologies and that's one of the ways that we've um, started to look at how this embeds then into the sole baseline so just looking over to that diagram here and um, if you're not familiar with this um, this model then you can find it via Soul Help um, and you can find it just from um, the drop down um, here. So you come in onto the Soul Baseline and then you'll see the model. So what you can see here is we've got um, certain areas that we're concentrating on in terms of the communication, the working mm -hmm. together, um, the course content but also allowing students to work independently online. Um, and it's our responsibility there to, to work with tutors to understand that there are ways that you can make things slightly more efficient mm -hmm. um, by doing them online, um, but actually make them more engaging, more interesting. Um, so, for instance, if I, I took a, a, a section of that model, uh, we're talking about signposting and providing students with context and instructions around something that you might be doing in the classroom. So that might be showing a short video, Mm -hmm. um, and having that on Seoul um, with instructions as to what part of that video you want them to watch, why you want them to watch it, and then bringing that in then to the classroom and having a discussion around that. And all of what we try to do is actually make the time in the classroom more valuable. Um, and this is why we want people to have the confidence um, mm -hmm. to do things in a slightly more creative way. Excellent. So it's a holistic approach. It benefits staff and students and it frees up time that you can spend doing the interesting stuff, yeah, of which course. is the teaching and the learning. Yeah, and which is why we've got the, um, the sole template as well to um, help give some direction to that. Mm -hmm. But of course, it is the baseline that we want people to go back to, want to reflect on and think about whether they're covering all of these areas in that particular model. Excellent. That sounds very good. Um, and the self-assessment is coming, it's happening? Yeah, so um, we recently ha ran a pilot in the summer, um, I'm sure some members of the staff would have done that, mm -hmm. um, and it gave them an opportunity to assess their digital capabilities in all of those areas I was just talking about in terms of the JISC model. Um, but what we found is that, again, that is our kind of foundations, but we want to take that perhaps a step further mm -hmm. um, and start to work that into some of the, um, the tools and the process that we have here at Solon. Um, so we can make people feel more comfortable with the, um, their day-to-day -day use of technology mm -hmm. in this environment. Um, so that's something that we're working on at the moment um, and will tie into then um, the Solent Digital Practitioner model that we've got. 
Um, and the idea with that is that it's a developmental tool. Um, it will allow um, people to understand their areas that they need to work on, mm -hmm. but actually um, reward them for those areas that they're doing quite well in as well. And I think that's really yeah. important. So this is a personal thing. It's not going anywhere else. No. no one's looking at this. It's just for you to learn more about yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think it would, we would really recommend that this kind of um, the outcomes of using a tool like this would be to go along to PDRs mm -hmm. um, and show your line managers areas that you're um, succeeding in and, and doing really well in terms of the tools that you're using to mm -hmm. um, improve your practice. Um, but also a great um, a point to see where you need to get further support and guidance from. I mean, if that means that there's a Linda video out there or a course that you can do to, to improve that, then that's definitely what we'd want people to do. Hmm. Um, and the great thing about having a tool like this is that it will be available on sole. And again, what we're always trying to do is make people feel more comfortable with the tools and the systems that they're using. Um, and this is a great opportunity for us to create something that um, is on a platform that people are already mm -hmm. familiar with. Um, but not only that, it gives them an opportunity to see how some of the tools and activities on Seoul can be used. Mm. So we are just taking a, an ordinary um, tool in Seoul and then reworking it for a particular purpose. And of course that's what we do as learning technologists, mm -hmm. help people to understand how to rework these types of activities. Excellent. Right, you mentioned Linda, so uh, let's bring in our <laughs> resident expert, Fiona Cooksley, Senior Information Librarian good title. Uh, thank you very much for coming. She can't speak yet, she's not coming. But there we go. She Thanks has power. <laughs> I have Excellent. a voice. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So you have basically led on Linda in the library, I think, for the last yes. few years. Um, the library has uh, subscribed to uh, lynda.com, uh, which is uh, an online uh, package of tutorials, mm -hmm. really high quality tutorials on wide, wide range uh, of different mm -hmm. types of software. Um, also skills uh, such as uh, negotiation, uh, giving presentations, so it isn't exclusively uh, software based, mm -hmm. um, it's, its coverage is really, really wide. Um, so, library subscribed so that all staff and students have mm -hmm. access uh, to lynda.com. Um, the, the content on there is really good quality. Um, they go through a really rigorous screening process mm -hmm. before somebody becomes an author for Linda. Oh, so, uh, you know that it's, it's reliable uh, mm -hmm. information and it's kept really up to date. Um, Linda work with uh, companies such as Microsoft so that when they're developing software, the courses are actually being developed in tandem so that when right. new software is released, Linda courses are available to support it. And it's uh, connected straight to away. LinkedIn now as well. It is, isn't it? yes. Mm. Uh, it's, Linda is actually uh, now owned by, by oh, LinkedIn. Okay. So everything can sync together. Absolutely. And, can, mm. and uh, when you've completed a course on uh, Linda, you can share that certificate of completion on LinkedIn. So mm. that's really good uh, for students uh, from employability perspective yep. um, to demonstrate that they've got those skills uh, and I think also to demonstrate to employers that yeah. they, they've got the, the dedication to mm, learn a new true. skill independently I think this demonstrates uh, some digital resilience mm. that uh, employers are looking for oh I like nowadays. that phrase yeah. I haven't heard that <laughs> digital resilience I like that great I like that a lot we should yes. use that mm. yeah is that how you stay calm when you can't work your DVD player yeah that, that <laughs> is an example of digital resilience Excellent. you know I don't have do to you want to throw it out of the, out yeah. the window or do you find a lynda.com video to, there is to, to help to be, you overcome yeah. that barrier? I like that. I will look that out. So how do we access uh, Linda? There is a wide range of, access, uh, of ways to access mm -hmm. uh, Linda videos. Um, they're on the library catalogue. So okay. if you put in some search terms um, and then filter to see online tutorials, oh. um, you can find them uh, through the library catalogue. Um, there is a landing page for Linda mm -hmm. uh, on Sol, uh, so you can get okay. in that route. Um, if you uh, teach on a course and you want to flag up 
uh, Linda uh, courses on your reading list. Uh, just mm. include them with the, the usual reading list that you pass on to the library, uh, and then uh, the, the reading list team in the library will set up those links to Linda oh, videos uh, for you. And of course, you could probably embed them in your soul you page can as well. Embed can't you? them in soul mm -hmm. pages. Very easy. You can also create playlists on Linda, mm -hmm. uh, which you can then share uh, with students. Um, so there's a wide Brilliant. range uh, of different ways mm -hmm. uh, to, to offer access. On the Soul page for Linda, uh, there's a new tab uh, for Linda for Career Pathways uh, and that's mm. been specifically uh, designed to support uh, staff development. Mm. Um, so the university has, has taken the decision to um, give all staff uh, a paid day's leave uh, mm. in order to undertake um, self-directed learning. Um, oh, yes. So there are um, lots and lots of Linda courses that can, can support uh, career pathways. Um, so we're developing this area on uh, the song page. Uh, we're working with Linda to map the criteria for career pathways uh, with relevant Linda courses. Um, so uh, that's we're adding more courses to, to that area uh, all the time. That's but great. What I'd really like to encourage staff to do is if you've found a course which is really helpful for, for staff development, there's a forum uh, on the, the landing page that you can uh, mm -hmm. share details of that course uh, with other staff. Um, so that, that would be really uh, helpful. Can build up, yeah, build up uh, a, a bank yeah. of courses that are really helpful. Because we were we Solent. were looking through there in the summer. We've put some Linda videos on uh, Succeed at Solent, yes. which you can mm. look at. Um, but I know some people might go into Linda as I did and think there's so much here. Yes. Uh, How do I know what's good? So mm. having like, almost like a peer review process yes. uh -huh. would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, that's great. So that's on the sole page for Linda. Yes, it is. Yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. I might add the succeed ones onto it then. <laughs> There's some really good stuff that, around time yeah. management. Even yes. you've got you've got your digital skills. You've got everything that ties in to yeah. everything that you want to do. Yeah. Yes, digital productivity yeah. uh, as well. And uh, I think yeah. that a lot of uh, th th there's. Um, more British authors coming through uh, on Linda mm. and I think that that's really helpful for anything related to organisational culture. I think it's uh, to have a, a British voice on that is, yeah. is, is really helpful. A bit more understanding yeah, of where definitely. you're coming from. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, That sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has trouble using it, how can... Um, there's a Linda uh, email address, you can, it's Linda, L-Y-N-D-A uh, at solent.ac.uk um, so they can email us for help uh, um, or you can leave a message on, on the Sol page as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean how, there, there must be potential for how we could use this more in the future, um, bring it in more, embed it more. Yeah. Yes, I think embedding uh, in unit pages uh, mm. on, on courses uh, I think that re really will widen uh, widen out the, 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 the reach to, to mm -hmm. a lot more students, uh, either through through the reading lists or uh, by directly linking yeah. from, from unit pages. Yeah, and just on that as well, um, where I was just talking about the self-assessment tool, mm -hmm. um, what would happen is once you get your results, you would then um, be directed to particular mm -hmm. Linda videos yeah. or Linda pay mm -hmm. playlists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the, would give you uh, you know five to ten videos that would be recommended for mm. that type of area that mm. you're looking to develop further mm. or to um, mm. to increase your know-how of something so I think that's kind of part of our process is to try and bring this all together yeah. in some way yeah. to actually make it a lot mm. more accessible it up. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and you know I think that's a great yeah. idea that Fiona was just saying about sharing that practice mm. of if you've got a good video then do tell us or you know tell someone about it and if it's on that forum then that's a great place for that to happen because it mm. it is hard and there's there's lots of material there yes. mm. um, and actually if there's a process that we can work together to find those videos then that would be a great way forward to mm. do that absolutely mm. yeah mm. brilliant um well we can get the lecturer's viewpoint mm -hmm. um <laughs> hopefully <laughs> we're, we're shuffling microphones uh bear with um, but I'm very pleased to thank you, Fiona. I really thank appreciate you. that. Um, very pleased to welcome Claire Hogan, who's a lecturer in cadet education in the Ward <laughs> School. So thank you very much for um, for coming. Really pleased uh, that you agreed to come because I know you've been 
doing some work with Hannah yep. uh, on embedding things. You've looked at Linda as well. So what have been your experiences around digital um, It's more about the H5P um, and yes. embedding that on the Solent pages, Sol pages. Um, so I'm quite new to lecturing mm -hmm. and I've got a 16 year old son so I know how the, everything they learn is off a screen and the right. subject that I'm teaching is a very practical paper based subject so it was just trying to get my head around different ideas mm. about how I could actually put stuff on sort of pages yep. for the students to enhance what they're doing in the classroom. Um, so yeah that was where Hannah came in and, and we went through some of the H5P mm. um, tools so things like the quizzes the multiple choice the drag and drop um, the hot spots, I really like the hot spots. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's just so many different things that you can do with those those tools and yeah. put them in sole sol pages so that the students have got something really different to, to have a look at and, and to interact with. Fantastic. So Hannah, what's so special about H5P? Because we um, did a lap blog on it last yes. week, but maybe there are some people who haven't read last week's lap blog yeah sure so and just on that as well um, just on h5p is that that lap blog is still available on the sole homepage so you can still see it on the left hand mm -hmm. side there so that's a quick link to get to it if um, you've not yet seen it but um, that was a video um, of myself and um, Ed our other land technologist talking about how we use h5p which is um, a HTML5 interactivity um, plugin mm -hmm. that we've got in Seoul um, and it allows uh, tutors and, and to work with us as learn technologists to create more interactive content um, so that might be just taking a simple multiple choice quiz mm -hmm. and then turning it into something that has a bit more interactivity a bit more engagement for the students mm. um, but there's lots of tools on there um, and the reason why we do think it's so great and it's worth kind of exploring is that um, we've got such great feedback from the students that say mm -hmm. that um, it makes learning more fun um, that it just brings to life a subject um, and it's really simple to do and I think hopefully Claire can um, yeah. <laughs> that as well. yeah, yeah it is it is it, the, the problem I have at the moment is that it's just uh, because I'm trying to do a whole course all mm -hmm. at once there's right. an awful lot of work to do all at once which is again I know a bit later you're going to talk about digital partners which is where that comes in really handy at the mm -hmm. moment they're taking a lot of the workload off me but yeah they are actually really easy to do yourself as well and um, if you've got the time to do them so that mm -hmm. they're great yeah. and have, has it gone down well with the cadets well I haven't started yet so oh, my okay. students start so you're just preparing um, your pages yeah at the they moment. start I think the first class I've got with them is on the 6th of February so I've got my I've got one of them is a timeline one of the H5Ps mm -hmm. is a timeline so I've got that because they're only actually in uh, the university for one full term and oh, then, yeah, they're, and then they're, they're off to see. see. Mm. So um, yeah, they've got about, I think it's about 14 weeks mm. and then that's it. So yeah, the I, timeline's great. Yeah, the time, I was going to say about the timeline, that's, that's an exciting one because it, it is about making content um, engaging and giving them activities to do, but something mm -hmm. like the timeline is more a case of just making something much more visual. Mm -hmm. So you go from having a schedule of work written in a Word document to a schedule of work written, uh, written on a table on Seoul mm -hmm. and then to bring it another stage further and then making it interactive so you can click on it and you can find out more information you yeah. can slide it through and it, it's mm. to help the students understand what's kind of coming up what they can kind of go back to yeah. and it brings all the topics right to the forefront mm. and I think that's really important for a student to see all right okay over the next few weeks we're going to be looking at this and here's an image that relates to it and it just yeah they can look ahead up. at some of the quizzes even and test their knowledge before they even get there yeah that's um, great so yeah but it's, it's really open for them to do whatever mm. and they can get out of it as much as they want to mm. um, they can keep going back and retaking quizzes um, so yeah it just really enhances what we're trying to do actually yeah. in the classroom um, which is great mm. I love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anything that helps yeah. Yeah. yeah how did you make decisions about the which content which material you wanted to display like that? Um, I'm quite limited because of my subject area I'm quite limited on what topics I can use for that sort of mm -hmm. for, for embedding um, the actual quizzes themselves they almost fell naturally um, a lot of the wordy type mm -hmm. of um, big lo lots of text it's naturally gone into a drag and drop sort of scenario right. um, where you drop words into the right place um, there are some of them that are more image-based 
um, mm -hmm. questions which could be more multiple choice you ask the question which of these images is you know, yeah so um, for boys which boy is a, a left-hand boy and they've got three images they have to pick which one it is so yeah oh, okay it's um is it i've done a, or we're doing a really real mix of which quizzes we're using mm. as well to try and mix it up for the students oh that sounds good yeah, yeah. I think yeah. variety is key yeah. as well though because yeah. there's a real tendency to just take something and turn it it into a bazillion multiple choice quizzes and it's just the yeah. case of okay that's great but that all soon you know you're tired of that you, you know yeah. the process and you keep going through it um, but actually what Claire's doing which is great is just using a whole variety of different activities mm -hmm. um, just to keep it fresh and to, to yeah. keep your mind working in different ways and um, just make it a bit more exciting for them I think yeah. really mm -hmm. and I think you know it's great to see that actually a subject that doesn't naturally fall into all this interactivity no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, is, is a great way to demo it so you know hopefully we'll turn this into a, a bit of a showcase unit so um, essentially anything you could turn anything into an interactive activity yeah. there aren't any subjects that are off limits no I mean two months ago I said there's no way <laughs> um, that, that was just the way I felt about the subject but the more I thought about it and tried to get my head around it mm. and then I had a chat with Hannah and she showed me what's available I was like no the, we can do it it's just picking Fantastic. and choosing which parts of the subject we, we put in there mm. so it must have been quite a challenge for you as well then just stretching yourself like that yes <laughs> <laughs> it has been a little bit but um it's been it's good as well though because you can see i know the students had haven't actually had chance to interact with it but i know i'm getting excited about it because mm -hmm. i can see how they are going to interact with it Excellent. um and yeah it's just going to help my job in the classroom mm. trying to teach them because they should be able to do a lot of the teaching not the teaching but a lot of learning outside of the classroom mm. so that when they actually get into the classroom we can content on concentrate on the main content yeah um so yeah it, it does free up a little bit of time for us to really concentrate on the nitty-gritty yeah. So, yeah and then hopefully it's appealing enough that when they're not in the classroom they want to go in yeah. and look at that as well yeah exactly yeah. yeah they want to be able to go and to, oh, have another go at that and see if i can beat my yeah. score yeah and, exactly. yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. It's interesting you mentioned your son. Have you tested anything on him? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. <laughs> That's to come. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? You get a cultural shift in, in how people learn, how they access yeah. information, mm. and we've got to be really, not to use a maritime pun, but we have to be riding that wave. Yes. We have to be yeah. on the crest. Um, otherwise, like we're all at sea. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you. You could keep going. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. And then I think, and also as well with that is that they are all reusable, they can be shared, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Claire could share some of these with her colleagues and they can tweak them and make them suitable yeah. for their needs. They're asking for them already. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Because it, it's great that your units are receiving this treatment, but if the cadets are coming to you and then they're going elsewhere and they're seeing There's other units that aren't supported yeah. in the same way. So yeah. we want to keep the student experience as consistent as possible, yeah. really, or as, yeah. as, yeah, so they know what to expect, they know what's coming and they enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. It will mutually supportive. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we like. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you. and sharing your experience. You're welcome. It's been thank really you. interesting to hear about that. Right. So thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Right, let me check out my running order. <laughs> There's lots going on today. Um, are there any questions? We don't know because Catherine's busy with the microphone. <laughs> this is so tense. Oh, no, she's, she's broken the mic. No, she hasn't. Learning technologies, we are all about knowing how to use the technology. <laughs> <laughs> any questions yet not really okay that's fine that's fine don't feel bad uh, anybody can ask at any time um, so very pleased to welcome Bogomil thank you very much for giving up your time and coming um, really pleased to have you here so um, Hannah this term yeah. a couple of weeks ago uh, set up a digital partner scheme which is brand new for Solon and it pairs students with members of staff um, to carry out different digital related tasks but I don't know why I'm telling you uh, when we've got the two experts here so tell us about the digital partner scheme how, is, how does it work what's it like to be a digital partner right so I'll just give a little bit of an overview of the scheme um, just following on from what you said there mm -hmm. and then I'll bring in Bogomil who's one of our digital partners 
um, that will tell you a little bit about his role and, and what he's done so far, mm -hmm. um, only in just a, a few weeks, really. Yeah. Um, Excellent. So the scheme itself has kind of come out of um, knowing that we've got students around the university that have got such great digital skills mm -hmm. um, and, and how we then imp uh, apply them in, in a context that's useful for a university. Um, and we've got lots of members of staff that are looking to do things with digital technologies but don't always have the time um, and also just going back to what I was saying at the beginning as having the confidence to do it as mm -hmm. well. Um, and because there does come a risk with certainly with what Claire was just saying it does take thought um, you know you can come and speak to us in the instructional design team to do mm -hmm. those kind of things but um, it does mean somewhat going out of your comfort zone so this was a scheme that we thought um, why not develop something where students and staff could partner up um, staff could share their um, learning and teaching experience, mm -hmm. um, the pedagogy behind what they're trying to deliver in the classroom and online, and then the student um, supports them by actually helping them to produce that digital artifact, that digital object, that activity, um, mm -hmm. and they mutually share and discuss their experience and their knowledge of that um, in a co-development, mm -hmm. co-creation type way. Um, so I think what's really nice about the scheme is it's doing a number of things there. Not only is it producing um, digital activities that can be again reusable and it's all the time is improving our soul pages, mm -hmm. it's improving the experience for the students um, but actually it's doing something as in it's giving the digital partner that's involved an opportunity to work as somewhat a freelancer, mm -hmm. um, use digital skills that they've got but also have training from us to develop skills as well so mm -hmm. if you're someone who does television and film but you want to know a little bit more about um, creating a website or putting some photos on it then you could get those skills as well mm -hmm. so as part of that scheme we are offering um, training and development as well as part of that um, so I think it's just really important that we see that everyone's got a part to play in the process mm -hmm. and for the member of staff um, they kind of have the ideas and they're the driving force behind what the activity is going to be mm -hmm. um, but actually that student can come in and work with them to give them the confidence mm. to know what buttons to press and know how things work and yeah. and also it's yes it's producing something here and now but going forward they share that practice between each other as well mm. so um, just to kind of um, give you a bit of an insight I'll, I'll pass you over um, and hopefully you'll be able to give us a bit of an insight as to what you've done so far um, and maybe why you applied for the role in the first place. Yeah. Um, so let me start with the, uh, saying that um, I'm a third year film production student mm -hmm. and being one I don't really have so much time that I used to have in first and second year. Mm -hmm. So um, when I looked into the digital partners position uh, what uh, I found about it is that you can actually work anytime that you can that you have free, mm -hmm. so uh, you are given a task, and then you can do it in the afternoon, in the evening, over the weekend. There is no uh, specific working hours, mm -hmm. which suited my mm -hmm. um, schedule perfectly. Yeah. So over the past week, I was actually working with Claire on a couple of her quizzes, which was a completely new thing for me because up until this point I was more into the media and video uh, sector and it was the first time that I actually created um, a digital content for a website. But I, I must say that it was actually really easy and really easily explained by uh, both uh, Hannah and the tutorial videos on uh, uh, both uh, the Porto and uh, on the H5P platform. Sounds like a really positive experience so far, and you've so far. found it all right fitting in everything with your timetable. Yeah, my, um, that, that, as I said, it's actually really um, easy for you because you can. You, all you need is a computer. Mm. Um, I can use my own laptop where I'm at home. I can actually uh, do the quizzes on the train mm. or anywhere. I just need a laptop and an internet. I don't have to be sat in an office specifically. Mm and it's allowing me to be more, um, to, to have more time to, uh, both for my uni and to have, have some free time. Yeah. And it is also an uh, additional source of, source of income, mm. even this obviously we're students and it's not the m most yep. important thing, but it, it is a factor. It is a factor, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a really good question and it's gone out of my head. <laughs> um, 
I can perhaps step in at just that moment. Step in. Um, yeah. Just to kind of get a feel for, um, I know it's kind of early days, but this kind of skills that you're developing that you feel that you might be able to apply um, in terms of your employability or future employment, um, perhaps you could just give us a bit of a, a, an understanding of that. Um, the digital partner scheme actually uh, makes you much more organized because now you have uh, tasks that you need to fit into your schedule. Now you have to uh, divide the hours that you have and you have to organize yourself. I've actually bought uh, an agenda book because I haven't used one before that. So it actually makes me much more organized and much more confident to go into a field that I have never been before, mm -hmm. such as the digital uh, website development. And also it allows me to work with uh, uh, tools such as the H5P one, mm -hmm. which is uh, which can be used broadly across uh, many types of platforms, and it also um, it, it is a really um, it's, it's a scheme that allows me basically to be much more efficient with my mm. time. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, what struck me was that. The whole purpose of this scheme was that the staff and the student, the digital partner, they are partners and they're working together. So how's it been so far? I mean, allowing <laughs> the care is there, but how's it been so far working with staff in that kind of way? Well, generally it has been wonderful. We've been uh, only been uh, contacted by email, we actually just met. But uh, I found it really easy, uh, they actually really uh, explained the brief in a really easy and approachable manner so that I was, uh, it was clear for me what I need to do. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't have any question, even though um, it was on a topic that I've never had any experience with. Mm -hmm. uh, but the brief was really well structured and I think that, uh, I hope that she is happy with my work. <laughs> Everyone's smiling, it's fine. Nods, yeah. <laughs> 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 so far, so good. <laughs> Excellent. So you could you could potentially work with anybody around yeah. the university who wants yeah. to get in touch and ask about. Yeah. It's kind of exciting. There's it a lot is. of there's a big potential client base. There. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is is freelancing an area that you think you would develop in the future? Is it? In that yeah, sense. most definitely. Um, also, I, I, I was actually part of the team who assembled this uh, the, the gear for indeed. this interview. Yeah, and thank you very much. I think uh, <laughs> you've done a great job so far. <laughs> so, this this is what another thing that the digital partners uh, scheme is actually really good with because it gives you really broad um, opportunities to work with all types of people and all types mm -hmm. of uh, industries, so that you can actually. When you finish it, you're uh, more than confident to go into freelancing or to work mm -hmm. with as an intern in the company. And that's why it's wonderful for uh, people fantastic. like me, uh, yeah. recently graduating. Yeah, okay. well, it's, it's just more to put on your CV, isn't it, that will exactly. hopefully raise you above the crowd. It's an amazing thing to kickstart your career. Yeah, well, good. I'm, gl I'm glad you think so. That's great. And thank you very much you. Um, for coming here today and talking about your experiences. Um, how could somebody work with a digital partner? Ah, well, um, brilliant. That's one of my next things I wanted to cover. So um, if you are listening and you're thinking, yep, yeah, that's something that I'd like to do, something I'd like to be part of, um, we are really looking for academic members of staff, but also other services around the uni that do want any kind of digital help. Mm -hmm. We've got other areas that are looking for some videos and looking for some icon creation. Um, so there's lots of things that we can cover. Um, but I'd really recommend people to come forward and you can do that by, if I just go onto the screen here again, um, we've actually created a link that's available via the sole help pages. If you come into staff support and then you go to help and support, um, what you will actually find is that just under uh, Solent Online Learning there, you've got a link that's um, work with a digital partner. Um, so if you just kind of haven't had a chance to listen to about everything that we're talking about today, it gives you a good overview there mm -hmm. about what the scheme's about and how you can get involved. And then most importantly, it links you to a form that you can complete to submit a request. Um, and it's a relatively simple form, it's designed to be straightforward so that you can get something done quickly um, and it just provides us with a brief um, that we can then give to the student mm -hmm. and then you would be partnered up with someone to get your work done. Fantastic. Um, and I think it's really important to realise that you are um, both 
the staff and student are equal partners mm -hmm. and I'm kind of there to support the scheme but ultimately they are then together to work mm -hmm. on that piece of work. Um, so just to give you an idea, it's actually linking to um, a Microsoft form, it's all online, um, it just gives you some instructions of, of uh, part of the scheme there and then as you scroll down um, you'll see things like you need to include what unit or what URL you need to add it to um, and you actually see there is a fairly limited menu of tasks at the moment mm -hmm. but that's purely because we want to make sure that the tasks that we offer out um, are doable can and that it, our yeah. students can actually carry out the tasks. Um, there is also a space to provide um, if you have got another idea, I'm mm -hmm. completely open to ideas of other things. Um, but it's just important to know that that might take us some time to train mm. up the students on how to do yeah. that. Um, but at the moment we're looking at tasks such as taking photographs and having sole headers, um, taking short um, videos, that maybe you want to turn your assessment br mm -hmm. brief into a video assessment brief, we can help with that. Um, doing things like quizzes, mm -hmm. um, we've had Claire already talk about using H5P. Yep. Um, so there's lots of different things there that we can already offer. Um, it's just a case of getting a, a few notes down and then sending it in to us. Um, we say that kind of give us about a minimum of um, two weeks um, to get it done. Um, but I think at the moment we're at a stage where we, we really want work to come in. Um, and if it's something that you perhaps are looking to launch in September, it wouldn't be a problem for us to work on it now so that you've got it in preparation for it. Brilliant. And what if somebody knows they want to do something but they don't know what they want to do? That's also fine because um, we've got a whole team of people that can help them do that. Fantastic. Um, so they can come and see the instructional design team. So again, I'd encourage you to look at that page um, on Soul Help because it gives you details on how to get in touch with us. Um, so that is also on instructional.design at solent.ac.uk. Come and talk to an instructional designer, talk to a learning technologist, and they can give you some ideas on the types of things that you can do with a digital partner. Um, and then we can find ways around it. That's great. Well, that gives um, quite the flavour of what's going on at Solent in terms of digital capabilities. Um, hopefully that has been interesting and useful. Did you want to come on? Yes, we have time. Um, so that's what's going on at Solent. We have a guest with us today from Bournemouth University um, who I have very gently persuaded uh, should also appear on the live class today because why not? Um, so I'm very pleased to welcome Scott Hedger who's a TEL developer um, at Bournemouth University. He's just having his voice connected. Uh, I will just spend a couple of minutes uh, with Scott. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having um, me. It's very nice of you to agree uh, to do this. <laughs> um, really pleased. Uh, so we've been chatting a lot today about what we do here. We've been hearing a little bit about what you do at Bournemouth and we realised we've got some commonalities, uh, which is good to know. So how do you tend to work with staff at Bournemouth or how would you ideally work with staff at Bournemouth? Um, in a very similar way that your team's currently working with staff. Um, We've recently moved over to a new VLE and we've found that a perfect time to, to do a digital capabilities mm -hmm. survey to try and mm -hmm. ascertain our staff and our students' capabilities, not just using the VLE but other tools that we, mm -hmm. we have on offer and you know Microsoft Suite uh, software as well. Um, so yeah, it's given us a great idea of where we need to you know, push our mm -hmm. training um, and whether or not we use students to help us with that as well you know that's a, something that I think I'll take back to uh, BU with the uh, digital okay. partner idea um, but ideally um, ideally in, in our team you know we're looking for academics to approach us with a plan that they want to mm -hmm. achieve in their unit you know what's their ultimate goal what are they looking to do what are they what they do they want their students to engage with mm -hmm. um, and then we can come back to them with an idea with tools that we've currently got available mm -hmm. or tools that we haven't got but can go out and find or, or software that can help achieve that, mm -hmm. that ultimate goal. Uh, at the moment you know we've, we're having a lot of people come to us because they know a tool exists but they, they mm -hmm. don't necessarily know how to utilize it in the best way. Yeah. 
but it would be easier for us to find out why they want to use it rather than just say this is the tool I like this tool I mm. like what it does but I don't know what I want to do with it um, okay so the teaching comes first and then it's about finding the right technology to support right. that, that teaching goal yeah mm. yeah we're, I think we're trying to sort of push push for that more than just uh, saying here's all our tools mm. figure it out for yourself yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely because I think there's a danger as soon as you bring in something shiny like yeah. h5p or well anything really any new tool or system comes in and you think i must use this yeah how can i use it whereas what i think we've been talking about today in this live cast is that digital capabilities is holistic it's it's got to be coherent it's got to be mm. connected it's got to support what it is that you want to do rather than be the thing that you want to do yeah. itself for its own sake yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I guess it, it doesn't matter how far-fetched your idea is, you know, it, we'll, we'll try and come up with a way of achieving it. Mm. Um, you know, any idea is, is a good idea, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we'd probably agree with that yeah. in our team as well. So come and talk to us and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think we don't like to um, scare people off with the technology. I think that mm. that's often part of the issue mm. is that you kind of you throw in a few of these ideas and actually it then becomes a, a big concern or worry that this is going to completely transform and change the way they do things but actually what we're here to do is help to improve them in perhaps just a very small way mm -hmm. um, but technology is not always the answer as well and I think that's important to remember that we're there to trial and give things a go yeah. but mm -hmm. they, you know, we're not here to completely change the way you do something no. we're actually just trying to enhance um, or improve I think, yeah. that's I think ultimately a lot of things it, it seems like there's a lot of work up front mm -hmm. um, once you've overcome that initial work then in the future it makes it makes life and makes teaching mm -hmm. a lot easier um, and you know getting the students engaged yeah in the long run it's that short-term investment isn't it and then life gets a lot yeah. easier yeah. in the long term yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and I think goal. we see that with things like quizzes. Um, it does involve a lot of time preparing and creating the questions. And, but actually, once you've got a bank of questions, they can be tweaked or they can be mm -hmm. used in different ways. Um, they can be shared among colleagues. And I think that you know, as long as then you've got a bit of a foundation to work on, that actually you have something that you can use year on year mm -hmm. um, and just change and tweak it slightly. It's not going to cause that much time every time you're going to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the key thing. It's a learning curve for everybody, but it's always much easier on yeah. the other side. Yeah, <laughs> and I think we did kind of mention it as well, is that it's, it's like asking the students what they think and if they've got things that they want to try mm -hmm. or any suggestions. I think it's always important to include their voice in this kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all using apps and they're all doing things in slightly different ways. Oh, oops. <laughs> that wasn't technology. <laughs> um, that actually, they've got ideas that they can share, and if you can listen to them and give them a go, then mm -hmm. that's bringing them into part of the teaching environment as well. Yeah. I think they're kind of expecting it. They're, they're the, they're the di yeah. digital age, aren't they? So they've mm -hmm. grown up with all of these technological capabilities, so they're expecting to see that at university as well, and it's, it's trying to get people involved and engaged with that so mm -hmm. that the students have the best experience possible and what they're expecting is what they're getting. Absolutely. I feel uh, a presentation that we um, did recently on digital capabilities, I had these two images that were really quite, um, just brought everything to, to the forefront was that students' main three concerns were their device running out of battery, them not having a good internet connection and things loading slowly. And yet on the other side of it, the staff were concerned about whether they were going to look silly in front of everyone, whether they were going to know how to use it, um, or whether it was going to work. So mm -hmm. you can kind of see the two different sides of things. And yeah. I'm not saying that's the same for everyone, um, but you can see that the students are just there willing to give it a go. They're just wanting their technology to work with them or keep up the speed with them. But actually, it's about getting kind of staff to give things a go because mm -hmm. the students are there. They're, they're willing to do it. Um, and I think we also kind of see that research does suggest that students have got the devices but they might not necessarily use it in the way that you would hope as an academic unless you direct them to it in that yeah. particular way. Um, so why not bring the devices into the classroom but mm. do give them guidance on, on how to use them effectively 
in terms of their subject material. Yeah. It's important to say. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And Did you want to? Yeah, I just wanted thing? to end up as well with um, the Digibud scheme um, oh, that we the Digibud scheme. had not yet yes. mentioned. And I think just to um, make our audience aware that we've got the Digital Partner Scheme that is to support staff, but also we've got the Digibud Quite scheme right. to support students. Yes. Um, and I'm not sure if Fiona um, has got any more words to, to bring in on that one, um, if she just wants to slip in. <laughs> um, but with that, it's a scheme that supports students um, to increase their digital skills yes. um, among each other um, and we do have lots of vacancies available that students can come in and, and to work on that um, and they can sit in the library and, and give skills. Yes, it's unfortunate our, our Gigi Bud was taken unwell today. <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, sorry, thank you Scott, appreciate that. <laughs> So the DigiBud scheme supporting students. Yes. Yeah, I just thought it'd be a, just a good opportunity just yeah. to share that one last. A absolutely. Um, the DigiBud scheme is uh, it is where digitally confident students uh, can uh, help other students who are uh, less digitally uh, confident in, in that particular area. Um, the, they're based uh, on the LT help desk. Um, so that's a, a really good location for them on the second floor. Uh, mm -hmm. Students can, uh, can approach them there. Um, and then if it's something that the DigiBuds themselves aren't able to, to help out with, obviously uh, there's the, the learning technology uh, assistance mm -hmm. uh, at hand uh, to support as well. Uh, the DigiBuds also um, have a Sol page um, that where they blog about um, different aspects uh, of digital capabilities, uh, particularly the areas that they, they feel um, confident in, in supporting other students with. Um, they also maintain a Facebook page uh, so students can ask for help uh, oh, on Facebook as well. So there's lots of ways uh, for students to get in touch. Uh, and as Hannah was saying, we're always uh, looking to recruit uh, more DigiBuds. Uh, so if you are interested in, in getting involved, mm -hmm. uh, please get in touch uh, via the Sol page. Fantastic. That's great. So it's worth staff knowing that they can get help for themselves, Absolutely. they can get help for their students as well. Absolutely. Uh, on regarding digital capabilities. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right. Well, um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you to all of our wonderful guests for sitting in this very cold, <laughs> dreary area of the Spark. Beautiful building, but it should be sealed. Um, or we're in the wrong place, I don't know. But um, it's been a really, really good uh, conversation. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back in a month or so with, a, with another live cast. Uh, I'm not sure yet what the subject is, but I'm just going to say real world learning. Yeah, that feels good. Uh, so watch out for details of that and uh, see you in a month's time. Thank you very much.